Okay, we are looking at the grade 11 November 2016 examination and we're tackling a question on Newton's second law of motion. A hovering rescue helicopter has a container of supplies with a weight of 1960 hanging from a cable. The tension in the cable is 2100 newtons. State Newton's first law of motion in words and this is the definition. Draw a label free body diagram of all the forces acting on the container so if i'm going to draw a diagram we know that the weight of the container acts di downwards we also know that there's some kind of tension force upwards the cable and they gave us the value of the tension they said it was 2100 and the weight was 1960 and the question says, why does the container remain stationary despite the tension being greater than the weight? Now we know from Newton's first law of motion that if an object is stationary, then that means the net force acting on the object is zero. So that would mean that all my upward forces, my tension, plus my downward forces would give me zero. But we can see here from my diagram that the tension is greater than the weight. But they've told us that the container remains stationary. So that would mean that there's one more force acting here downwards. There's one more force acting on this helicopter and that would probably be the resistance, the air resistance downwards. So why does the container remain stationary despite the tension being greater than the weight? Our answer would be because of air resistance. So air resistance is an additional force downwards, which would cause the vector sum of all these forces to be zero. And I can actually work out the force of air resistance. I can say the tension plus the force of the air resistance plus the weight of the object will give me zero because they told us that the helicopter was stationary. And I'm going to take up as positive. The tension is an upward force, so positive 2100. We don't know what the air resistance is. The weight is downwards, minus 1960. And that would allow me to solve for the air resistance. And that would give me an answer of 140 newtons. And you can call this air resistance, or you can even call it friction if you want. So that could be the friction force of air resistance. And now they say the winch inside the helicopter starts to pull the container upwards with an acceleration of 0 0.13. So they're telling us that now there's an acceleration of 0 0.13. And they ask us to calculate the mass of the container. Now we know the weight is equal to mg. They gave us the weight. They said it was 1960. We are looking for M. We know G is 9,8. And when we solve for M, we're going to get a mass of 200 kilograms. And that is how we would calculate the mass of the container. They now ask us to calculate the magnitude of the tension in the cable while the helicopter is being pulled upwards. Now if I look at all the forces, if I go back to my free body diagram and I look at all the forces acting on the container, we've got tension, we've got the weight, and we've got air resistance. But what has changed is that now they told us there's an acceleration. So this time, if I use F net, I cannot say that F net is zero, but rather F net is equal to MA. And this is from Newton's second law of motion, which says that if a net force acts on an object, it causes the object to accelerate, and they've given us the acceleration. So the net force is made up of the tension, plus the weight, plus the force of air resistance, and that is equal to MA. Now they've asked us to calculate the tension, so we don't know what T is. The weight we know is negative 1960, because we are taking up positive. And we've worked out the force of air resistance in the pre previously, I've worked it out. And the force of air resistance was 140 newtons downwards, so negative 140. The mass was calculated in the previous question as 200, 
and the acceleration they've given us, they said the container is being pulled upwards with an acceleration of 0 0.13. So upwards would be a positive acceleration. And when we solve for t, we are going to get an answer of 2126 newtons upwards. And that is the magnitude of the tension. And the last question asks us, um, after an acceleration of a few meters, the container is being pulled up at constant velocity of 0 0.8 meters per second. What will be the magnitude of the tension in the cable while the container moves upwards at a constant velocity? So we know when we see constant velocity, then again, that means that the net force is zero. And this comes from Newton's first law of motion, which says that the, if an object is moving with constant velocity or if an object is stationary, then the net force is zero. So that would mean that the tension plus the weight plus air friction has to give us zero, just like how it did in the previous question. So the tension would be equal to 2,000 100 newtons if the object starts moving with constant velocity. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like if you did and subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos. And please share this video with as many of your friends as possible so that more people can benefit from these video lessons.